Hello and welcome back. This video is part two of proving the sum and difference identities. And here are the two identities we proved in the first video. So now it's time to move on and prove the next ones. Okay, so now we want to find out what sine of alpha plus beta equals and sine of alpha minus beta. So we don't really want to do any more than necessary. So let's see if we can use some of the identities we have already learned to make this proof simpler. So the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of 90 minus alpha plus beta. And that is because we have those things called cofunction identities. We don't use them that often, but the cofunction identities are like this. The sine of an angle equals the cosine of 90 minus the angle. You might remember we went over those on our first day of this chapter. Or the cosine of an angle equals the sine of 90 minus an angle. So we're using for our angle, we're using alpha plus beta. So the sine of the angle alpha plus beta equals the cosine of 90 minus the angle alpha plus beta. Now what I'm going to do with that is distribute the negative. So if you look at the previous, we have 90 minus alpha and also minus beta. So 90 minus alpha minus beta, but then I'm going to group it so that 90 minus alpha is my first angle and beta is my second angle. Okay, so notice that what we have here is cosine of one angle minus another. And we just proved that the cosine of one angle minus another is the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. Now, once again, using the um, cofunction identities, we have the cosine of an angle, or sorry, we have cosine of 90 minus an angle equals the sine of the angle, so those are equal, and the sine of 90 minus an angle equals the cosine of the angle, so those are equal. So at this point, we've done as much as we can to simplify this. So we have sine of alpha plus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. Okay, now let's go through the process to find what sine of alpha minus beta is. Now it's kind of similar. I've used a cofunction identity. The sine of an angle equals the cosine of 90 minus the angle. And then I distributed the negative. So we have the cosine of 90 minus alpha is our first angle. And then because we had minus a negative, it would be plus the other angle. So 90 minus alpha is our first angle. Beta is our second angle, and it's the cosine of one angle plus another. And we have an identity for that. The cosine of one angle plus another is the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. Then we use our cofunction identities one more time, and the cosine of 90 minus alpha is equal to the sine of alpha and the sine of 90 minus alpha is equal to the cosine of alpha. So we substitute those in. So now we have the sine of alpha minus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. So here are the two angle addition and subtraction or sum and difference identities for sine. Notice when you're adding the angles, you have a plus, and when you're subtracting the angles, you have a minus. So I like to say that sine has the same sign See, when it's plus, it's plus, and when it's minus, it's minus. That helps me remember. Okay, finally, we're going to prove the tangent sum and difference identities. Keep in mind that tangent is the same as sine over cosine. That's one of our uh, ratio identities. 
So, sine, so tangent alpha plus beta equals sine alpha plus beta over cosine alpha plus beta. And we just learned that the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. And we just learned that the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Now we do a little bit of simplifying. And what I'm going to do, and you'll see why in a minute, is I'm going to divide each term by the same thing so that I'm just multiplying by a special form of 1 or dividing by a special form of 1, essentially. I'm going to divide both terms by cosine alpha, or all the terms, I should say, by cosine alpha, and also divide all the terms by cosine beta. So, what happens in each fraction? In the first fraction, the cosine betas cancel. In the second fraction, the cosine alphas cancel. In the third fraction, both of them cancel, leaving us with just a 1. And then in the fourth fraction, nothing cancels. So what we have now, we have sine alpha over cosine alpha, which we can write as tangent alpha, plus we have sine beta over cosine beta, which we can write as tangent beta, over 1 minus sine alpha over cosine alpha is tangent alpha and sine beta over cosine beta is tangent beta. So that is what is our identity for tangent. Tangent alpha plus beta. And then the same thing happens for tangent alpha minus beta but the difference is we have a minus here and we have a plus here. So we end up with tangent alpha minus tangent beta over 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So notice about the signs. When you have minus, you have minus on the top. When you have plus, you have plus on the top. And then the opposite sign on the bottom. So those are our tangent sum and difference identities. And that completes the proofs. Thanks for watching.